to my video. Today I want to talk about Tim Holtz Distress Oxide and I want to see how many ways I can use this one ink pad. So I received this in the Two Sisters Art sampler box for March this year, which you still have time to subscribe if you're not already. And um, so I thought I'd try this. So using some of the things that we got from the box and a few other things, I will see how I go. So this colour is Stormy Sky. Uh, and so this comes in a square, as do most of the Tim Holtz stamps, uh, ink pads. So it's opening up to a clean page here. And let's see what we can do. So obviously with stamping, the first thing that comes to mind is just using it as a stamp. So I have here um, another, a stamp that arrived in my sampler box from Two Sisters. And I'm just going to take the packaging off, which is stuck on really well. And it's going to stamp onto there. So you can see that colour coming on there. And press down. So that's one way to use Distress Oxide. Or any ink pad, really. And there's your image. So you can often get um, stamp pads that go on the back of here as well. Which also help with that. So just to clean it, I usually have a dirty page in my journal. And I just keep stamping it till that colour comes off. Some people use baby wipes to get the rest of it off, which is probably the better way to do it, to make sure that you've got it all clean. Alright, so that's one way. Second way um, is, so I've got a stencil here from the Crafters Workshop, which Carmen Medlin designed. And this is called Mini Pretty Succulents, which is just some, um, lots of little flowers and succulents on it. So, I'm taking my Distress Oxide ink pad, and I'm going to use these mini, mini ink blending tools available from Ranger, which you just pop them out. So, it comes with two handles and four little pads. So, I would suggest that you use, um, you can either use these one per colour, or one per like colour family group, like all the blues, and then all the purples, or the greens, or something like that. So it just comes off and you've got Velcro on there, which is also stapled on in case you end up pulling it off. Black side goes to the Velcro, and that's how it is. So all you do with this is you put a bit on there. Not sure how much. It's been a while since I've used it. And then you can just put it through your stencil. And there's your stencil image. You can also just use it directly on your paper as well. And you might need a bit more. And you can blend it out like that. So it starts off quite dark, and as you use up the ink, it all fades away. So that's three ways to use it, or two ways. Um, I've also you can also just use it straight from the ink pad. So you know, either wipe it on your page like that, or another great way to colour your edges of your page is just to rub it on the edges so you can get sort of a distressed look about it. So that's one, two, three, four, five ways. And add a bit of water to it. And I can, so where that ink's gone down, I can wet it and move it around the page to get sort of a more translucent watercolour effect. And that's just using a paintbrush with water on it. I can also just paint from the ink pad. And a colour on there. And that's just like just rubbing it on there and then rubbing it on your page. If you want to do it that way, you have a bit more control over where it's going. some spray bottles but the kids have been into them and they're all empty at the moment so if we just take a wet fairly wet paintbrush and I'll just put it on the top and see if it'll run some color down so that sort of picks it up as well because it is water soluble 
and I'll run some drops of colour down. So I've got a fair bit of water, so there's that slight grey, bluey colour going down there. Just need to get that colour moving a little bit first. going to dry that off. And then if I put some of this down, and again if we just rub it on there, it's just easy to see like that. And then I'm going to flick some water on there, onto that that I've just put down. <clears throat> My water's a bit dirty, so it's coming up a bit brown as well. <clears throat> and then dry off those water droplets, and you'll see that it'll sort of create that a, um, an effect there of that splatter and it's a bit lighter over the darker ink, ink pad <clears throat> excuse me um, another way you can do you can take some so this is the packaging from the stamp that I used earlier and I'm just going to rub some on there so I don't think it'll come off too well just like that so you can stamp a little bit like that and then if you add water to that which again is my really dirty water it makes it move around a bit more and then you can like smush it over your page if you need to if you want to how many are we up to I've lost count now um, hmm. Another way to use the ink pad, so I've got a little chipboard piece here that came in the box and I can use the ink pad to colour that. So I'm just going to put it on some scrap there and just stamp it on. It will work better that way. So it does start to um, you know, put a few layers of that colour down and then you can colour it like things like your chipboard and probably some other um, pieces like that. Okay, so I'd love to see what else you can come up with, any other ways that I may have missed um, that we can, I'm sure there are plenty more out there. And all these were provided by Two Sisters Art in the sampler box for March, so looking forward to seeing what you guys create with it. Alright, thank you for watching.